Well, so, so this guy, he needs no introduction, but he's still going to get one. Plan engineer by day, community volunteer by night. Are you volunteering right now? Uh, sure. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Todd Taco. No, Todd Delk. So generally, um, I always do these presentations about something I'm passionate about. And uh, back in 2008, uh, before the, the big uh, recession, uh, I was working at an engineering firm, really overworking in an engineering firm, and um, was pretty miserable. Uh, but then the Great Recession hit, and uh, we were big into housing, and we were having a hard time. So we had to take a 10% pay cut, and we had to figure out how we were going to do it. And my decision was to take option three was to do community service for my 10% pay cut. So I decided to work with two uh, different organizations, SparkCon, which I don't need to speak about here, and the Appalachian Trail Conservancy with their trail crews that work on the, tr uh, the trail every single year. So this was my summer vacation for this year, was working on the trail. Now, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy sponsors six trail crews Trail magic is basically really cool. If you're a through hiker or a hiker on the Appalachian Trail, trail magic is where you come around a turn and all of a sudden there's water or there's beer or there's snacks for you to take. Well, trail magic for me was when I actually went and worked on these crews because it has become a passion of my life is to work on these crews. The Appalachian Trail Conservancy has six different crews that maintain 2,180 miles of the trail, the biggest national park in the nation, and these trail crews do major, huge work. They, do, they don't just rehabilitate the trail. They work on putting the trail in new locations when it's in danger of erosion, whether it's uh, encroaching development, whether it's on uh, personal property that needs to be moved to, to, private land, to public lands. Um, so I started helping out with this. And this, this organization is amazing. This became one of my summer vacations every year to work out in the middle of the woods in the hot, hot heat and with uh, bugs biting me all the time, and you wonder, why in the world would I want to do this? This has got to be bad. Well, it's because this is the typical thing you see on these trail crews every single year. Every single person is out there beaming, smiling, and loving what they're doing. They love this organization, and you just it's infectious. You have to go and try this. This is my magical moment every year. I get to go do this. I go and work hard for five or six days a year just because it is so cool. Um, basically, what we do every year is there's different, there's six different clubs up and down the, the trail that you get on the first day, you get to base camp, which will be coming up here shortly. Boom, base camp. And middle of the week, you get up there, you get to have dinner with all these cool folks that are working with you. Czar is our base camp manager and is like one of the best Cajun cooks ever. So like first night you get there, she has some awesome Cajun cooking. You get to meet the people you've been working with the week. You might sing about some cornbread and butter beans. Um, you never know what's gonna happen, but you start to mesh with these people that you're gonna see all week long. You get to rekindle friendships that you've made over while you're working each year. Um, and you get to have your one good night of sleep for the whole week because the next day you pile up in your vans you pack all your equipment up, and you get to drive anywhere from one to six hours to where you're going. This is the different crews that work up and down the uh, Appalachian Trail. As you can see, the Conorak crew, which is one I work with, we cover almost half of the trail by ourselves, other than the Smoky Mountain National Forest. Um, but we could be working anywhere from Georgia all the way to Virginia. I've worked on four different sites. When you get out there, you have to set up camp, and this is where you'll be living for the next four months. It sounds glamorous, doesn't it? It's fantastic, great. You could be working on a, you could be living on a fire road or a spring-fed lake. But the great part is you set up a community for that whole week that is really close-knit, and you really work together. You have a good time. You play. You maybe, uh, you know, you get to work together. You get to eat together every single day for four days, and there's no TV. There's no internet, you're in the mountains, sorry. You don't get to play on that stuff. You have to talk to one another. You have to share stories. It's really amazingly cool. You're out in nature. The next morning, you get to wake up, and from Friday through Monday, you get to go work on the crew. You get to go build part of the trail. You get to learn about 
all sorts of cool tools. You get to do morning yoga and stretch sessions. You get jokes. Your uh, yoga session may turn into a disco. Who knows? So, <laughs> but it's pretty cool when you're at about like 4,000 feet doing it, looking over the, the Shenandoah Valley. So you do that, and then you get a nice, wonderful walk every single morning, which is pretty cool, except for the first morning where you get to log these heavy tools uh, up into the mountains, um, which is sort of fun. But these moments are really these magical moments that we're talking about tonight. You have sometimes anywhere from a 15-minute hike to sometimes a two-and-a-half-hour hike just to get where you're going to work every single day. And you make a lot of friends during that hike. You get to see a lot of cool sights. You get to see wildlife. A deer might be following you up and down the trail, which is pretty crazy. And uh, you also may get to a point where for your lunch break, you're looking at something like this. Pretty freaking amazing. This right here is about a 30% slope going up the North Carolina-Tennessee line. Literally, that tree was the line. Um, and then you actually get to do what you're there for. Oh, my God. We're actually going to work on the trail for four to six hours a day. You get to do big, you know, cool manly things. You get to work with tools. You get to bust rocks. You get to cut down the side of the hill and put a trail in it. You actually, you know, big manly things like these guys down here. You get to work with Bob Peebles, which is like, he's like the Chuck Norris of the Appalachian Trail. I mean, you know how you're supposed to have bear, bear bags on the Appalachian Trail? Bears hang, hang Bob Peeble bags because he is that amazing. He is so cool. You come down at the mountain every day after working really hard. You cook dinner. It's pretty awesome. You actually get really good dinners. You get some Oreo pie, actually. Uh, hey, vegan Oreo pie, uh, Alex. Vegan Oreo pie with olive oil and soy milk. Still works. It's awesome. In the middle of the nature. And then it gets dark, and you're really tired, so you go to sleep. The nightlife isn't very cool on uh, Trail Curse. <laughs> <laughs> you're beat. You're ready to go. You're done. But, hey, lakeside, lakeside eats are pretty cool. Um, so this is typical trail life. So you're like, I'm still not quite convinced. Why should I go out and do this? I can't understand. Well, the cool thing is you really get a whole new appreciation for nature. You go out every single week, and on the scale, even on the little scale, you're looking at these little flowers that are just popping up in the middle of nature, in the middle of the woods, that you really don't get an appreciation for until you go out there. You get an appreciation for every little thing while you're on the trail. You're, you're, you're hyper-focused all through the whole time. You get to see all these cool sights. You get to see flora. You get to see fauna. I mean, you could be, your campsite may be on the top of a bald knob where the pon wild ponies are every single day, and you have to fend them off to keep them away from your food. You got salamanders. You got the trail mice helping out. Uh, Alex asked, do, what do you believe in if you believe in Santa? I said, I don't, but I do believe in the Bigfoot because I have seen him out there, and you even get some dinosaurs. These are some of the crew leaders over here on one of our wild field trips outside of it. But it's really sort of cool. It's, uh, you definitely do see bear. They have invaded some of the campsites, which is a fun experience. But uh, you learn from it. It's all good. And last but not least, you get some pretty amazing views when you go up there. Uh, take your evening side trips. This is where we spent 4th of July this, this year. We sat on the Blue Ridge Parkway right beside our work site. Zach Finney here is one of our assistant crew masters. He's the one that took a lot of these pictures. But we got to see four different firework exhibitions going on at one time from the Blue Ridge Parkway. You could like see them, boom, 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 all happened at the same time, and you're sitting up on top watching all of it. So it's a pretty cool experience. Um, the amazing thing is you get to experience with some really cool people. I've worked on crews for four different sessions now. I've had folks from Alaska, we've had people from England, people from England that had never been to the United States ever before, came over here to work on the Appalachian Trail for three weeks and then went home. This is all they came over here to do, because it's that cool. You got mothers and sons working on it. You've got, you know, retirees, college folks, everywhere across the board, all walks of life, and never have I ever seen anybody fight or get upset with one another the whole time because you're all there for the same purpose. And when you get both the amazing views and amazing people to see them with, it is definitely a magic moment. You can sort of understand the trail magic. This is McAfee's knob. 
uh, with some of the folks that happen. You get to take weird, great uh, field trips, you know, the James River, you know, mountain rivers. You Every once in a while, go get to see some the bluegrass one night during the week. So you actually do have nightlife one night, so one night. But it, it, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, oh, by the way, we actually are building a national park while we're out there. We are building a national park. You get to see, you get to build these things that people, a thousand people a year are going to walk over, walk beyond, and every single one of them is going to see this. Whether they notice it or not is another whole thing because they may be tired or whatever, but you can go and you've made your mark that, you know, decades from now is still going to be there. You're uh, joining a group of people that have been working on this since 1923. You know, the Civilian Conservation Corps, you know, they, these are the folks that they've been building this since the, you know, the Depression. It's amazing. So, my, like I said, Alex said, a plea for help. Don't y'all want to do this? This is amazing. It's awesome. We want you to come out there. You know, this is fully sponsored. This is no cost to you. The Appalachian Trail Conservancy, the Park Service, and the Forest Service fully sponsor this. It's five days, including the weekend, which means if you're going to take time off of work, you don't have to take the two weekend days, so you may only have to take three days off. Sign up this spring. Come out and work with us. It doesn't have to be Connor Rock. It can be one of the other crews, but here's all the information you need. Uh, if you can't come and work out, be a part of the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. It's one of the most amazing national parks we have in the whole system. Go look at our, uh, our blog. It's got some great stuff. This year we built a mile of trail, a mile of new trail. So it's pretty amazing. Thank you all so much.